So that's the good news. The bad news is, um, literally everything else. Hello, friends. My name is Elizabeth. And I'm currently working on the second draft of a young adult fantasy. It's a magical mystery. I have been doing a goal that I set for myself to do two scenes per week in draft two. And that's all been going fine and good. You know, most of the weeks been going okay, some of the weeks not so much, but that's okay. So now here we are. I believe this is week eight. However, <laughs> okay, so I got my notebook. So this week I was supposed to be doing scenes 25 and 26. And you know what? I've actually already done them. So this weekend, today is Monday, this weekend, just like bam bam, I pulled scenes 25 and 26 from draft one, put them in my draft two document, you know, went through them, made sure everybody's names were correct, deleted things that were referencing things that no longer happen in this story, and uh, you know, connected them and it was going good. And I was like, well, yeah, just breezed through that in a weekend. Didn't film it, probably should have, but I didn't. And so I thought, you know, coming into this week when I was filming, I was like, maybe I could get ahead. I could do four scenes per week. But, um, um, me, ah. Uh, hmm. So then I went back to my draft one document and, um, everything fell apart. So I knew this day was coming. <laughs> All right, because when I was writing draft one, everything in the story fell apart in act three. I am not yet at act three, but apparently everything falls apart, um, sooner than I was expecting. <laughs> because the next several scenes that are in draft one a, like two of them don't even need to exist, and B, the rest of them that I was encountering well, last night when I was trying to decide what scenes I should be pulling into draft two. So many of the next scenes, I didn't know what the pull was supposed to be at this point in the story, so I was just writing things that needed to happen and the characters were just like, how convenient! <laughs> and it happened for like five, ten scenes in a row. It was not good, it's not good, it's not good. The entire second half of this story is going to need to be restructured. <laughs> well, actually, okay, so I did do some counting. So far in draft two, I am 48,000 words in. 48,000 words into draft two, which is not bad. I'm on scene, I just finished scene 26. I believe it's scene 23 or something that doesn't exist, so you know, those words aren't in there, but it's fine. So 48,000 words. What's left in draft one? from where I am now in the story, it's only 22,000 words. And yet it could be upwards of like 30 scenes. <laughs> Do you see the problem? <laughs> okay, so, so far in draft two, I've done 26 scenes with at least one of them having no words to it yet. Skipped it entirely, it doesn't exist. And I'm at 48,000 words. The rest of draft one, approximately 30 scenes that I counted last night, only 22,000 words. Because it's all so piecemeal and not fleshed out, no connective tissue. <sighs> so, I mean, right now it adds up to about 70,000 words. I, I don't want this story to be over 90,000 words, but I mean, right now it could be like 150,000 words, 200,000 words, because there's still so much left that the story needs. Like, I feel like I'm like at the halfway point now in just event wise. Which isn't bad because the scenes of 25 and 26 were, I keep looking down here at my scene list, 25, 26, were um, like a good, what would be a good midpoint for the story. Like it was change of direction, a sudden increase in tension, and like the events, some of the events, a lot of the events left in draft one are really good. You know, they have like the increases in tension, in tension, in tension, building to the big climax. The problem is there's no reason for the characters to be doing this. <laughs> the poll is all wrong. At least one of the characters literally has no motivation for what they're doing. They're just doing it because I needed them to when I was writing the first draft. So what I'm going to do in this video, I was hoping it would only take me one day, but now that I'm thinking about it, it might take me several. Hopefully it doesn't take me more than several days. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to restructure everything else in the book and figure out everybody's motivations for the rest of the book. Because right now, um, at least one of the characters, but probably more than that, there's no motivation. They're just doing stuff because I'm forcing them to. And it's very, very evident in the story. So, the first thing I'm going to do is go through, identify all of the scenes that currently exist in draft one, 
mark them down in my notebook in a new list, and then I'm gonna have to go through to see how they all feel and line up alongside like the events of the Save the Cat structure. I don't follow that structure like 100% structure, 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 but you know, it just kind of helps to see what your story is shaping up to be. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm also gonna have to go through and identify everybody's motivations, what their motivation has been up to now in the story, and what it's gonna be going to the um, climax of the story, because right now it's all wrong. I mean, just, just all wrong. So, the rest of the book is gonna have to be restructured. Many of the scenes are going to have to be rewritten because several of the scenes, I mean, I was so struggling in draft one, so several of the scenes of the characters just sitting around being like, what do we do? What do we do now? <laughs> because that was basically me. So, and then, you know, they don't come to any conclusions, they just do what I need them to do for no good reason. So all those scenes are gonna have to be cut and, you know, dreamed up new scenes to replace them. It's gonna be a bad, it's gonna be a problem. I, I, hmm. In the words of my 7th grade language arts teacher, I am in for a world of hurt. Why did my 7th grade language arts teacher used to say that? I don't know. She was scary. So, um, to sum up, this weekend I wrote two scenes and I realized that I am 48,000 words into drafted. So that's the good news. The bad news is, um, literally everything else. So I am gonna count and retell you yesterday in my frantic state of realizing how bad the rest of the book was, I did a brief count and it was like approximately 30 scenes exist in the rest of draft one. Those 22,000 words somehow equaled about 30 seeds. I don't know how that worked out, but I'm going to count them again when I'm identifying them and I'll retell you how many scenes there are. But if there are 30 scenes and I was able to do two scenes per week like I've been doing with draft two, theoretically I could finish draft two in four months. Two scenes per week. <sighs> that's not ideal, that's kind of a discouraging thought for a couple of reasons. One being four months is longer than I wanted to spend on the rest of draft two, even though I know, you know, up to now I've been spending like a year on draft two. Oh my goodness. But it's also discouraging because four months feels like such a long time and I know these 26 scenes that I've already done in draft two have taken me way longer than four months. And I feel like the next rest of the scenes are going to be so much harder because there's going to be a lot of rewriting after I even establish what the new structure is. And I'm worried I'm not going to be able to do two scenes per week. And then, what will I do? It will take me like a year to finish this bookie. Maybe even longer than that. And that's just not what I want. So, there is some stress happening for me. And I'm like, maybe I could just start doing more and more and more. But I don't want to burn myself out. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, bird by bird, we're just gonna have to start at the beginning and see what happens. First step, identifying all of the remaining scenes in draft one from where I am now. That's the first step. Step two will be seeing how they lay out against the Save the Cat beat sheet, just to see what the shape of my story currently is. And then step three will be writing down, identifying everybody's motivations throughout the story to try to you know, figure out what motivations they have and what motivations they still need. Because right now, some of the characters, they have no purpose to be doing what to do. So those three steps are all I'm going to be worrying about. I probably shouldn't even be worrying about all three of them at once. So, step one. All I need to think about now is identifying the scenes remaining in the draft. I'll write them on the list and then I will get back to you. Alright, first problem um, that I'm running into, I keep wanting to like restructure as I go, like every time I come to a scene and I'm like, oh, this is a terrible scene, we don't need this. I want to try to think of what we do, but that's step two and I'm not there yet, so thank you for memory. <laughs> I'm also not sure, should I be writing down the scenes that I know have nothing to do with the story anymore and I'm just going to delete them? I was able to identify 24 scenes left in the document. I ended up just not even counting the scenes that I encountered that I knew just have nothing to do with the story anymore and we don't need them. So those scenes do exist in draft one but I didn't put them on this list because we don't need them. So I'm now working with 24 remaining scenes. Most of them are bad. There's no pull. There's, there's just, you know, no motivation. The main character is just bopping along 
needing things to happen and then things just happen for her. You know, that's that's how stories go, right? <laughs> so I already don't remember what I said steps two and three were going to be, but my next step is going to be just to see how these 24 scenes and maybe even all the other scenes in the story, but probably not. That's that's future draft thinking. So probably just these 24 scenes, how they align with the second half of the Save the Cat beat sheet, because I'm pretty sure where I am right now in draft two is like the very natural midpoint of the story. You know, which which is a pretty positive thing. At least that's what I'm telling myself. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I think step three will be the odious restructuring of the last half of this book. You know, some of these scenes will happen. You know, some of these scenes are right. The pull, the motivation in all of the scenes are pretty much wrong. So that's gonna need work. But some scene, like the events that happen, you know, are the right events. And I like them and it's a good escalation of tension. It's just the reason the events are happening are currently all wrong. So I don't know how to get to the events now, naturally, um, from where we are in the story, but uh, yeah. But that's step three. I'm taking myself too far ahead in my thoughts. So right now, step two is going to be seeing how this aligns with the Save the Cat beat sheet. If I'm revising this video, revising, if I'm editing this video later, and I see that my one, two, three steps were something else before, you know, who knows? I can't remember what I said back then. I should have written it down, but I didn't. Even though that was literally like half an hour ago. <laughs> anyway, my new step two is Save the Cat beat sheet. Step three, restructuring. How long do you think this is going to take me? I'm hoping, I'm hoping like maximum three days of restructuring. But we'll see. Okay, so far I know two things. First, the next scene, scene 27, is a scene I just came up with this past weekend when I was working on scenes 25 and 26. So it did not exist in draft one, it does not exist yet, which means I'm going to have to write it from scratch, which is intimidating. But I know it needs to be in the story. The second thing I know now is two of the characters that I have been worried recently don't have proper motivation to carry them throughout the rest of the story. Actually kind of do, like when I sit down and write out what their motivation is. They do have a motivation, I just haven't been implementing it into the story thus far. So, you know, I've probably been going about thinking like, I'll just do a draft in the future for motivation, which is what I do. You know, I revise in layers. Once the story exists in its whole form, like it will after I finish draft two, then I start revising in layers rather than looking at each new draft as trying to fix everything all at once. So I'll do, you know, like hundreds of drafts probably, but I don't call them like draft 10, draft 50. You know, I just say, okay, now I'm doing a motivation draft. Now I'm doing a description draft, you know, like that kind of thing. That's, that's usually how I talk about it to myself in my head. So I, I will have to do a motivation draft, but I also probably should have been working in a little bit more motivation into the story as of now, because right now, even though I kind of know what their motivations are, they're not at all present in the story, which is not great. So that's currently where we are. All right, so far I have tentatively figured out what the next four scenes will be. Two of them I am pulling from draft one. Two of them are um, yet to exist non-written scenes, <laughs> which means I will have to write two full new scenes as part of the next four scenes. I'm going to keep trying to do this all the way to the end of the novel just to get a better idea of what my structure is looking like. When I compare my current story to what's the, the beat sheet of the Save the Cat, it's actually, it's not that bad. You know, I'm at the midpoint. So far, the events kind of lining up with that, which feels reassuring a little bit because um, the next half of the book is going to be chaos. <laughs> but I will keep you updated on what the next scenes are going to be. All right, so, so far in this extremely tentative plan that won't be solidified until I actually start writing the scene, <laughs> there are, what I have come up with at the moment, 20 scenes remaining in draft two, which is drastically lower than the 30 I counted before, but that was just some reckless counting. So at the moment, I have laid out 20 scenes. Four of them are going to be completely new, newly written, do not exist yet scenes that were not in draft one that I will need to create. Four out of 20, that's not too bad. That's better than I was expecting. 
we shall see. We shall see what happens when I actually get going. At the moment, it seems kind of okay. But uh, I'm feeling great fear because the next two scenes do not exist yet. So the next two scenes that will need to be in draft two, I'm going to have to write completely from scratch. And I'm worried about it. So that's where we currently stand. Stay tuned for an update. vlog yesterday I was feeling just very lethargic and possibly overwhelmed but I was able to pull myself together <laughs> enough in the evening I sat down with all of my documents and I was able to compile a document with all of the notes that I have ever taken on this story's primary antagonist so I went through draft one and like my handwritten notes and my notes on my phone and new notes I'd taken in draft two and I created a new document all about my primary antagonist. And the reason is because coming into the second half of this book in draft two, obviously the primary antagonist is going to start playing a much larger role in all of these scenes and I need to have a complete understanding of them. Part of my problem when I was writing draft one was I did not have a complete understanding of my primary antagonist. And it, I don't think it was like a motive problem or a backstory problem because I have all of that established and written down. So I'm not sure what the problem was, but I thought my best course of action would be to compile all of my notes about them so that I could, you know, just sit with the information I have about the primary antagonist, process it all before I start writing the second half of draft two. Because the primary antagonist is the character that has given me the most trouble so far in this story. When I was writing the first draft, all of the characters were going good and I was feeling, you know, in touch with all of them except the primary antagonist. I could not ever find a way into their mind. I couldn't find a way to make them feel real like a human being. So a big part of the problem with the ending of draft one is everything that the primary antagonist does feels like a caricature acting rather than like an actual person and I don't want that to be the feeling of the story so I need to find an in into the psyche <laughs> of the primary antagonist. And the best way to do that, I felt, was to compile everything I know about them into one document. So I did that yesterday. I haven't really studied the document yet, but I am planning to, you know, just let it percolate in my brain, just constantly read through it and organize it and try to figure out a way into that character's psyche. Because I don't have an in yet and it's a struggle. <laughs> so I need to have an in before I get to the scenes where the primary antagonist is playing a major role in draft two because in all of those scenes in draft one are terrible because I had no in into that character's psyche so they all just felt bad. I can't keep all that so now this planning stage for the rest of draft two I think is almost complete. There are the, <laughs> the last thing is there are two scenes I pulled from draft one that I put in my list of scenes that I want to include in draft two that I pulled them from draft one and I want them in the story. I like those scenes. The problem is the cause for those scenes that was in draft one no longer exists. Does not happen. So right now I have two scenes of effect with no cause. So it, if I just wrote, you know, draft two in the scene order that I currently have listed out, once I get to those scenes, it will just be just some random effect scenes and no cause and the readers will be like um what the heck where did this come from what, there was no build up to this no no cause just some effect it get i can't have that so clearly something is missing but i don't know yet what i want the cause of those two scenes to be those scenes are like you know 10 scenes away from where i am now so i'm not too worried about it i'm not planning on figuring out that cause before i go back to working on the scenes so like the next scene i need to work on i believe is scene 27 and I think scenes 27 and 28 don't yet exist. They didn't exist in draft one because the story was taking a different turn. So now they need to exist in draft two, which means I'm going to have to write them from scratch. My goal will continue to be two scenes per week, but I'm not sure if writing scenes from scratch, I will be able to write two scenes per week. That will be my goal for next week, but I don't know if I will be able to achieve it. I'm just saying. <laughs> so tw scenes 27 and 28 will have to be written from scratch. Most of the scenes that I have compiled into my list of what the rest of the story in draft two is going to be 
I will be able to at least pull some portion of them from draft one, which is encouraging. The thing will be, I, like, the cause and effect isn't really there yet. Not just for those two scenes that have literally no, no cause at all. So I'm gonna have to be working that into the scenes, and I'm not sure... I'm not sure I might have to be inventing a lot more scenes than I have even imagined right now, but I, I'm, I'm just gonna worry about that scene by scene. So for now, my planning stage is complete enough for me. And then next week I will begin, next week which technically starts today on Wednesday, you know how my weeks go, I will begin drafting scenes 27 and scenes 28. I'm feeling kind of good, but you know, the good feeling will only last until I actually begin, I imagine. So that's where we stay. Also, um, the gas company is digging outside again. If you've been following my vlogs at all, you'll see, um, very frequently the gas company just pops around outside and starts digging. I'm just gonna have to tell myself that a gas company that's always digging is better than a gas company that's never digging. Thank you.